We have come to the last week of our January series on Crosspoint 2021. And I really hope that through this series, all of us can grasp what it means to be a church. Every year we set a theme because we believe this is what God wants us to focus on in this season. And this year, our theme is Seize the 167. It means our Christian faith must encompasses all areas of our life. For this entire month, I have been explaining each of these things in detail so that as a church, we know where we are going. And also, we can serve God together in unity and with tons of excitement. And today, we come to the last piece of the puzzle, loving the city. But what exactly do I mean by loving the city? Because it seems kind of vague, right? And it can be taken in a bunch of different directions. So let's define it first. Here is what I mean when I say loving the city as a core function of the church. As God's children with a secure identity, we will pour out our life to make Toronto a better place to live for all people even if it drastically lowers our standards of living. This is a call to sacrificial living. And I hope that you feel a heavy burden in your heart right now. Because if your idea of following Jesus is good health, good grades, good money, and good life in general, then today's sermon will be a wake-up call to you. So let's grab our Bible. This morning, we will be in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4 to 7, and then also verse 10. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. In this prophecy, Jeremiah delivered the harsh news that it will be 70 years before God delivers them from oppression. That's like at least two to three generations, right? And it meant most of the Israelites who experienced the initial trauma of being relocated to Babylon will never see their home again. Just think about that. Imagine how disappointed they must have felt when they heard this word from God. But at the same time, God promised to not give up on them and will continue to work through them. In fact, in verse 5, God wants them to build houses and plant gardens. And then in verse 6, God wants them to marry their children and grow the family. Basically, this meant God wanted them to settle down, all right? Put your roots down for long term and become part of the community. And then in verse 7, God said, Seek the welfare of the city that you're living in, even though you are an outsider. And then pray for the city. Because in its welfare, you will find your welfare. God essentially told the Israelites, I know you feel like an outsider, and you will probably always be treated like an outsider. You will worship a different God. You will have different set of morals and values. You will have to navigate an environment where the dominant culture does not respect you and does not welcome you in the public square. The easy thing to do here would be to retreat into your own bubble and then stay in your comfort zone and try to ride out you know, your life. But I don't want you to do that, God said. I want you to put your roots down and work with your neighbors to make the city a better place for all people. I want you to pray for the city so they can be blessed by God. In their welfare, you will find your welfare. Now, how can we then seek the welfare of the city? 
Or in other words, how do we love the city? When God first created Adam and Eve, he gave what the theologians called the cultural mandate. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, God gave them a command to subdue the earth. It meant building a human civilization that glorifies God in every aspect. Now, in recent years, Christians commonly describe this as human flourishing. So when we talk about loving the city, we are really talking about promoting human flourishing for all people. And that is God's command to us through the cultural mandate that he initially gave to Adam and Eve, whom represented the entire humanity. Let's talk about justice and mercy, and also using our career to make an impact. All right, justice and mercy, using our career to make an impact. First of all, the Bible talks a lot about doing justice and mercy. In fact, there are four groups that are mentioned very often when it comes to justice and mercy. Can you guys guess what they are? Do you remember? The poor, the sick, the immigrants, and the widows. Justice means giving people what they deserve as someone made in the image of God. This means they have a right to life, right? No one can kill another person. This means they have a right to be treated with dignity and respect. No one can discriminate against another person. This means if they work hard in life, then they have a right to the same opportunities regardless of their backgrounds. No one should lose a job, be rejected by a university, or be denied healthcare, for example, simply because of their background. On the other hand, mercy is giving someone more than what they deserve because they really need the help. As Christians, we have to go out of our way to show mercy to people. Maybe someone in your neighborhood is very sick, and are you willing to sacrifice your time to be with them in the hospital if they need it? Or take care of their daily needs like run errands for them, or take care of their kids, or prepare food for them? Maybe there are kids in your community who did not come from a good family like yours. Are you willing to be their friends and maybe help them with their homework so you can be a good influence in their life and so that they can rise above the broken family and make better decisions in life? Now, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that this is what God requires of us if we truly have a relationship with Him. The Bible says, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. When we do justice and show mercy to those in our city, it will improve the lives of those at the bottom of society, isn't it? And we must do it even if it means sacrificing our personal standards of living. Now, in addition to helping those at the bottom, as part of loving the city, we must elevate the lives of everyone in general. And this can be done when Christians see the purpose of our career as a way to make contribution to society, as a way to promote human flourishing to all people, right? Everyone can do this because you have a career. Now, this might sound like common sense, what I just said, but it's actually quite rare in the Western world from my observation. Because as a society who thinks mostly about ourselves, we tend to make our career all about ourselves. For example, some people see work either as a way to make money so that we can take care of our family, or as a way to gain respect in society. And when those two items are the criteria, the dominant criteria, it's natural to choose a career that pays well, that is stable, and that is you know, well respected by other people. You might go for a doctor, an engineer, an accountant, or a school teacher, for example. In contrast to that, some people see work as a way to express ourselves. We want to do what we are passionate about. We want to do what makes us truly happy. And when these are the dominant criteria, I find that people cannot stay in one career for long, you know? 
because our interests and passions changes very often. So our career then changes often as a result. You could be a YouTuber for like two years and then a traveling musician for another three years. And then you might start an online business for two years. You might teach English at a school for another four years. And we spend most of our 20s and 30s just trying to figure out what we like to do only to find ourselves not accomplishing much when we hit middle age. We need to see our career as a way to use our skill to make a contribution to society because that is how we can promote human flourishing for all people. It's how we can glorify God with our work. When that's the purpose of our career, it actually has many implications. If you are still a student, whether you are a teenager or maybe you are a university student, don't just think about whether a job pays well or whether it's your passion. Instead, start with the question, how can I use my talents to love the city? And keep praying about that question and then trust your future in God's hand because God has a plan for you. Do you believe that? Now don't get me wrong, just because you don't think about whether it's your passion first when you think about your future career. That doesn't mean that God is going to make you do something that is impactful, but that you actually hate. Of course not. It's going to be a process where God gradually leads us towards a vision of how you can live out the cultural mandate and promote human flourishing. And at the same time, God will also shape your interests and your skills so that in the end, your dream matches up to your calling. And as you learn and discern and trust God, there is going to be a deep satisfaction in your heart knowing that you're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this to serve God through serving people. And because of that, you're gonna have passion, you're gonna have excitement, you're gonna have meaning and purpose with your work. So let's quickly summarize. How do we love the city? Do justice, love mercy, and then use your career to promote human flourishing. That's how we as a church can fulfill God's mission for us to love the city. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to seize the 167. Help us to become a church that honors you with our worship, that lives in community, that gets the word out, and that lays down our life to love the city. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.